Welcome to Medica Cardio Talk 17. Today we are again back to you and talking about some important development in the treatment of cardiovascular diseases. We all know that lipid management is an important component of cardiovascular disease prevention and it continued and it continued to remain so even today. Patients with high cholesterol, high low density cholesterol, LDL and other abnormalities are conventionally being treated by different types of statin like atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, simvastatin and so many others. But furthermore, despite so much treatment with statin, the lipid doesn't become normal. There are situations where it is elevated, it is high and we need further drug Uh, therapy along with statin. Nowadays people are talking a lot about bempedoic acid as second line of lipid management on patients who are otherwise statin intolerant or who are on optimum dosage of statin treatment on abnormal lipid profile. Today in Medica Cardiotox 17 we are going to talk about the role of bempedoic acid and where does it stand in the lipid management for patients of cardiovascular disease. With me, my colleague Dr. Dilip Kumar is going to educate us, is going to enlighten us on the role of bempedoic acid as lipid management for the patients of heart disease or abnormal lipid profile. Dr. Dilip Kumar. Thank you, sir. And uh, hello, everyone. So we uh, are having now uh, bempedoic acid, which is available uh, in India and uh, which is launched one uh, month you know, back uh, commercially. And it's a very you know important new addition. So when we uh, talk about new uh, lipid therapy, bempedoic acid has got strange and new position, and uh, that is because of its you know two three important characteristic. Right. So the number one is bempedoic acid acts on the same pathway. So by virtue of uh, you know inhibiting the cholesterol synthesis, uh, this drug is different from the statin. Right. Uh, it, because. The, the the enzyme which acts on uh, pro drug bempedoic acid which makes it uh, you know an active metabolite is available only in liver and kidneys correct exactly and this is not available in the skeletal muscle sure so the side effect which we got uh, which we get from uh, Statin. statins like myopathy it's not there with the bempedoic acid and uh, and it, it gives you modest reduction in LDL, you know, cholesterol and also triglyceride level. Up to so do you think that the bempedoic acid is a replacement of statin or it is an addition to the statin treatment? So it's always an addition. It's a right. complementary drug. And sometimes when the patient uh, is not tolerating statin, then this is a very, very good drug. And uh, bempedoic acid, uh, when we, uh, it's, it's a drug which is not also very costly. Right. So it's sure. affordable and uh, this other drug which is very promising is agitimide and what I feel is this pempedoic acid is going to take up the fate of uh, agitimide also. So a lot of companies are making agitimide plus pempedoic acid together. Sure. But if we talk uh, realistically, uh, we do not have enough data on agitimide but do we have enough data to support that pempedoic acid is a good supportive treatment along with statin or a good alternative to statin intolerant patients? Yeah, we have trials now. We have trials like uh, clear tranquility where uh, the patient had myopathies and uh, this was given pembedoic acid. It, it brought down LDL to a very, very, you know, uh, acceptable limits. So it's a very, very uh, good alternative in those patients with statin we can't give. And uh, one or two problems uh, are there with this. Number one is uh, it can raise uric acid a little bit. Yes. So those patients who have gout should be very careful when it is given. And this drug has got some interaction with simvastatin and provastatin. So sure. it should not be com combined with simvastatin or provastatin because it increases the you know concentration of these two drugs two folds. But we do not use uh, simvastatin and provastatin anymore. We mostly use atorvastatin or rosuvastatin. Yeah. So we in India do, we don't have problem, but simvastatin is still in use uh, in the UK Europe. and uh, in Europe. So, uh, but rosuvastatin and atorvastatin it go it goes it well. goes very well. So just uh, if you could quickly summarize that what are those conditions or situations where you will recommend or you will prescribe bempedoic acid as a supportive treatment along with statin or in patients who are statin intolerant? 
yeah uh, so uh, this is one uh, you know uh, important area where uh, bembetoic acid has a role where there is a statin intolerance and the another uh, very vast area where bembetoic acid has a role because many of the patients we give statin high, highest dose statin but still the uh, ldl reduction is not up to the True. mark and the patient doesn't go in the uh, target which we uh, re- really want the patient to have so there bembetoic acid is a very good addition in addition to even uh, we can add dextromethorphan also so these three drugs probably going to work what about familial hyperlipidemia yeah and then uh, conditions like familial uh, familial hypercholesterolemia especially homozygous and uh, as well as heterozygous so we have to bring down to uh, the ldl a lot and uh, there uh, all these three drugs can be more handy pcsk9 inhibitors are good drug but it's very costly which is prohibitively very very uh, you know uh, very costly uh, therapy so pcs can an inhibitor uh, and do you think bembetoic acid can also be added along with pcs can an inhibitor or somebody on pcsk inhibitor is can an inhibitor if the cholesterol comes down then you may withhold bembetoic acid for some time so we see bembetoic acid as an alternative to pcsk9 because pcsk9 is very costly as you say very right uh, Ab- and very absolutely. less patients are uh, you know affording it and uh, this with statin it gives a reasonable uh, you know reduction in cholesterol and it invariably brings down the cholesterol in the target level correct so when you treat uh, hyperlipidemia and we need to really aggressively control the cholesterol and ldl cholesterol then you need to have second drug along with statin bembetoic acid today could be an excellent alternative because it's cost effective and is affordable to the patients in general although pcs can an inhibitor is there but as dr kumar said very rightly it is expensive and may not be a suitable alternative for all patients of lip abnormal lipid or or dyslipidemia but of course in some situation like familial homozygous heterozygous uh, lipidemia pcs can i can be considered so with that um, the bembetoic acid is a good drug and we should look forward to having uh, more such clinical condition where the benefit can be given to the patients with prescription of bembetoic acid after this lipid management concept the advancement of lipid management idea we are moving to completely different site which is cardiovascular intervention especially in terms of valve intervention we have already spoken about transcatheter aortic valve intervention today even the cardiologists are engaged in doing mitral valve intervention particularly in mitral regurgitation as well as in tricuspid valve intervention in tricuspid regurgitation so dr kumar where do we stand today in management of mitral regurgitation and tricuspid valve disease like tricuspid regurgitation by cardiologist or intervention cardiologist yeah i think this uh, area is very very uh, rapidly evolving and uh, we have a hell lot of patients who require uh, you know uh, correction of the leaks mitral leaks or uh, tricuspid leaks which are which uh, moderate to severe mitral uh, regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation when if we don't treat these patients they go downhill because of the remodeling process which keeps sure. on happening and many many patients they have this uh, severe mr severe tr and the surgical risk is very high and we don't do anything to them correct and here comes the role of uh, you know mitral valve percutaneous interventions uh, especially uh, the the coap trial we showed uh, in mitral uh, secondary mitral regurgitation secondary secondary mitral leaks like those patients with a ischemic heart disease or dilated cardiomyopathy Uh, where surgical risk is very high uh, somewhere like uh, with ejection fraction between 20 to 40, 50% and uh, severe mr functional mitral regurgitation maybe so essentially means that if you could identify these patients at relatively early stage before they go into a very advanced situation and then offer them a transcatheter mitral valve valve intervention called by mitra clip just putting few clips across the my mitral valve to fix the defects and therefore reduce the mitral valve area i'm sure the long term results are good the the outcome driven information and by doing so patients are actually doing well so from mitral valve intervention just quickly let us take our viewers towards tricuspid valve intervention so this is this is similar scenario right and and uh, this is what also very important in, uh, we all know that isolated tricuspid valve intervention carries a 10% mortality surgical mortality yes of course so this is this is very high mortality rate and that's why a lot of interventions are getting done in uh, you know tricuspid valves nowadays uh, those patients who had a earlier uh, mitral valve surgery done and the tricuspid leak was mild now it has progressed to moderate severe 
and probably these patients uh, before they get a severe RV dilatation, the tapsy becomes less, the RV fail starts failing. If we get a such kind of a sweet spot, what we got in mitral valve interventions in co trial. Sure. If you hit the bullseye there, we get a trial which shows us the right time of uh, interference in these, you know, tricuspid valve interventions. It is going to be basically the inflection point. So, Excellent. Yeah. So tricuspid valve intervention is equally effective, but you have to really identify them very early stage. And you need to remember that if actually the valve, the right heart fails completely, then it may be difficult. So the the selection of the case has to be very judicious and with a lot of wisdom, the case has to be identified. But again, tricus valve intervention done by interventional cardiologist, that is another upcoming and, uh, and coming up or sort of progressively people are getting engaged in the valve intervention technology. So before we, we uh, there's a concluding uh, sort of remarks from you, Dr. Kumar, what do you suggest that in our subcontinent we get a lot of rheumatic heart disease patients? Do you think this uh, transcatheter valve intervention for mitral regurgitation is applicable in rheumatic mitral regurgitation or is it applicable for tricuspid valve intervention like tricuspid regurgitation? Yes, so rheumatic heart disease is altogether a different substrate where uh, not only the valve which is uh, you know involved, the adjacent myocardium and then there's a tethering, a lot of uh, fibrosis you know, uh, is involved there. Excellent. So the results are uh, probably uh, will not be, uh, you know, translating to the same uh, way benefits. what we have seen in the, the same benefits not be there. So as we, as we heard from Dr. Kumar that mm -hmm. it is a good technology for secondary mitral regurgitation and tricuspid valve intervention is again a good technology for tricuspid valve inter intervention. But in both the situations, you have to identify the right kind of patients with a judicious application of knowledge and patients should come early. They should not sit on it and come very late because in that case, it may not be quite effective. So uh, I think the, today we talked about the lipid management advancement with bampedaic acid and a newer technology of structural valve intervention of mitral valve and tricuspid valve by mitral clip and tricuspid clip or triclip or further intervention by catheter. With that, uh, thank you very much once again. Please do watch Medica Cardio Talks. I am sure we will enjoy that. We would like to have your feedback, your comments on our presentation and updating uh, ourselves and of course our viewers on the newer technology of cardiovascular management. Thank you very much. On behalf of me and Dr. Kumar, we will like to see you again in Medica Cardio Talk 18.